this is Brian Rowe with the Mythic MTG Tech number 279 going over Thopter Gifts, a new deck archetype in modern that is making waves. Gary Thompson has played this two weeks now with very strong results. It is the pack leader for getting Thopter Foundry going and takes a card that I love, Gifts Ungiven, that is really underplayed in modern and uses it to power this combo. Now, when I say combo, it really is just a way to get a bunch of 1-1s and gain a bunch of life. It helps you with your aggro matchup a lot. It is not an infinite win. Occasionally, you will grind out even after getting the combo out. They'll kill the foundry, and then you'll have to keep looking for another foundry. The deck overall is a control deck early on. It has this massive creature life advantage engine to it, and it's got this great utility package with Gifts Ungiven. Whenever I do a deck tech, I like to provide a budget alternative. Unfortunately, there's no budget alternative. This is a thousand dollar deck. All of the major cards have spiked because of the potential power and that this deck is now doing well. I may do a budget Gifts Ungiven deck, coming up because that card is underplayed in modern and there are other shells where it could be really good but this particular deck cannot be made on a budget it has a very strong mana base it's really a two color deck you got some basic islands basic planes in there the ability to fetch them up you've got mystic gates glacial fortresses and celestial colonnade which protect you significantly from choke. The colonnades can act as an endgame win condition in a very grindy game, although you're normally going to win before getting the colonnades online. You've got hollowed fountains in there, which you can fetch up. You got to be really careful about your life total because this is a slower grindy control deck. You don't want to get burned out too early. Ghost Quarter is in there. Very, very useful for taking out particular targeted lands. And then you've got this wonderful package of Academy Ruins, Engineered Explosives, Polluted Delta, Watery Grave, Teleria West. Now, I know that I said this was a two-color deck. There's one black source, there's one black card which can be cast for white. You're basically going to be using the black with the Engineered Explosives to get rid of your opponent's Lilies or other three casters that are being annoying to you. Teleria West allows you to search up the Engineered Explosives or the Ghost Quarter it acts as a tutor for them. The main combo here is the Sword of the Meek and the Thopter Foundry. You can get this online. You're basically gonna be creating 1-1 one, one creatures by sacking the Sword of the Meek. The Sword of the Meek is gonna to go to the graveyard and then the 1-1 one, one coming into play is gonna trigger and the Sword of the Meek is gonna come back and attach itself. You're going to sack it again, you're going to get another 1-1, one, one. you're going to gain a life during that process, and you're going to overwhelm your opponent with these little 1-1 one, one blue flying Thopter artifacts. Why, if that happened, we well, wouldn't have a chance. One of my favorite cards in this deck is Muddle the Mixture, because the transmute on it allows you to go get both parts of the combo and helps you significantly with your combo matchup. Muddle the Mixture is a solid counterspell against things like Scape Shift. Very good control card right now. You've got a pair of spell snares here. This is one of my favorite one casting cost counter spells ever, especially in modern where there is a plethora of two casters to counter. Snapcaster Mage, Tarmogoyf, Scavenging Ooze, Spell Skite, Cranial Plating, just to name a few. A lot of your powerhouse threats in modern are two casting cost, and being able to counter them on the draw and then get your own threats on the board is very important. It also lets you counter your opponent's Thopter Foundry if they're playing this same combo. We've got the best removal here in Modern, which is Path to Exile, especially if you're not playing an aggro deck. Lightning Bolt is very good too, but I like Path better when you are the control combo deck. Thirst for Knowledge is very, very useful in this deck because Sword of the Meek doesn't need to be in play. You can discard it and pick up three 
real cards off of this instant speed card draw. Serum Vision really signals this is a combo deck and it is your best opportunity to cycle through and find the cards that you really need. I've tried playing Thought Scour in this particular spot. The problem is if you mill the particular pieces that actually have to be on the board, like the foundries, it can get a little bit rough, especially if you don't already have a way to recur those artifacts back on top of your deck. Although Thought Scour is a serious alternative in some of the other builds that we've seen with Thopter Foundry. We've got wonderful removal here. Supreme Verdict is great, especially against counter spells. Oblivion Ring and Detention Sphere are in here as singletons. They work really well with the Gifts Ungiven. The earlier version of this that Gary was running also had a Day of Judgment instead of the second Supreme Verdict. If you are playing against more fair decks that don't have counter spells, I like having the ability to go Supreme Verdict, Day of Judgment, Wrath of God. He's got his Wrath in the sideboard currently. All three of those main deck mean that Gifts Ungiven is going to give you a forecasting cost board wipe. Let's talk about Gifts Ungiven for a moment here. It allows you to search your library for up to four cards with different names. So it's very useful to have singletons in this deck. Your answers and your threats outside of your combo piece can be singletons. It says up to four. You don't have to find four. Then your opponent chooses two of those cards and those cards go to the graveyard. So if you only found two cards, like Unburial Rites and Elish Norn, they're both going to the graveyard and you're reanimating Elish on the next turn to wipe their entire board of goblins. Gifts Ungiven can be used to find four different cards and often is when you need particular answers or you're bluffing with regards to something that is in your hand but it can also be used in this super powerful way of just getting the two cards you want putting them into your graveyard and then reanimating the creature that you grab we've got talisman of progress in here this is very very good for the thopter foundry deck it gives you an extra artifact that you can sacrifice additionally it ramps you from two to four mana you want to be at four mana for that gifts ungiven so it is ramp at the right time also let's talk a little bit about the sideboard one of the things that really made me decide to do this deck tech was reading gary thompson's article over on star city games about a week ago he talks about sideboarding, and this is one of my favorite sideboarding strategies out there. It's really being transformative in your sideboard and diversifying your threats. Because after you crush people with Thopter, Foundry, and Sword of the Meek, they're going to side in a bunch of stuff to shut down that combo. And this blue-white shell allows you to put new threats into the deck and grab them with Gifts Ungiven, while also blanking all of their sideboard cards that they brought in for Thopter, Foundry, Sword of the Meek. I really like this strategy. It means you're attacking on several different axes on game two, and they may hold a hand with a bunch of anti-sword Thopter cards and then just be crushed by a different win condition. We've got Elspeth, Jace, and Iona, as the type of threats that come in, none of these are stopped by Stony Silence. They're all very, very powerful cards that must be answered, especially if your opponent is playing control. A Resolved Chase or Resolved Elspeth can win the game no problem in Modern against a control deck, and Iona shuts lots of decks down. We've got some particular answers in here and gary actually talks about how Hercules recall is not good right now because robots is losing a lot of popularity if local players are playing affinity i would have multiple copies of Hercules recall in there but if nobody in your local meta is playing it it's probably a dead card disenchant is a nice answer across the board and celestial purge is very very solid removal out there especially for pesky red or black permanents that are going to cause you a huge problem 
Knight of Souls Betrayal being one of those. You've got to have a way to remove that card, although you've got those other enchantments main deck, so just upping the number of removal that you've got helps a lot. This deck is actually not that bad against aggro. You're only really playing two colors. You don't take a lot of damage from your lands. Cards like Timely Reinforcements can help a lot. Gutshot is a solid card for dealing with Infect. You have to be able to kill that Glishner Elf before you die. Adding extra board wipes also helps you with the fair creature decks. We've got some of the best counter magic here. Dispel is wonderful and negate is very very powerful overall i would definitely give this deck a try at least build it to play against it it is a very resilient deck it's not easy to play it's worth practicing against i believe you're going to see more decks like this in the current modern meta so for cutting edge tech in modern subscribe to mythic mtg tech thank you to everybody who's over there supporting the channel on patreon i greatly appreciate it until next time, choose the cards wisely.